everyone, Pot ISM. Welcome to our next video build. So before we get going today, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notifications, get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it. Okay, in so this is part one of our Rebel Chevy Chevelle SS video build. Now, we reviewed this kit a few months back. Um, so you want to go back look at the review. I'll put the link in the description down below. Looks a great kit. It's a 2019 new tool. A couple of boxings of it. This is the latest one. And for a new kit, it looked really, really good. And I'm holding out, hoping it's going to be a good build. So, um, we picked our colour. We picked Chevrolet Classic Copper. Um, um, Gravity Spain actually made the colour for me. And they've now got it on their website. If you want to do the same colour, you can go on over there to the Gravity Spain website. And it's there for you. And the colour looks amazing. Have a look at the end of it. See what you think. And uh, let me know. It looks really good. So hopefully three parts as usual. The first one will concentrate on the bodywork, get it painted, decal, clear coated. Second one will concentrate on all the running gear. Um, third one, um, the interior, engine. It may be four parts this one because there's an engine as well. And then we get all together and get it all finished. Hopefully over a couple of weeks we get this done. And then we'll pick our next video build and come back for that. There we go. I know this one's been quite eagerly anticipated and I've looked forward to doing it as well. Uh, and it's nice to jump on board and finally get going with it. So let's jump straight in with the build and get going. Okay, straight in. So this is the boxing. If you want to see a review of the kit, I'll put the link in the description of the video. We reviewed it a few months back. As you can see, typical Revel kit, all unceremoniously chucked in one bag. It is individually bagged, which is good for a change. And here's our body. Now, out of the box, pretty clean body. Quite impressed, to be honest. Um, looks good. A couple of pieces to glow on the back. And obviously, we've got our bonnet slash hood to cut off and clean up as well. Uh, but overall, for a new tool level kit, as you would or should expect, it looks a really good kit. It's so got a few parts to cut off. We've got the bonnet. And we've got these rear um, corner pieces too. These are going to need to be cleaned up or a quick test fit when I figure out which goes which way. There we go. Actually shows that they fit really well. So a little bit of gentle cleanup. Using a 400 Ultima Thinny Stick. Get the remains of the sprue off and then give it a clean up of a sponge too to get the curve. And then clean up a buffer and that's all done. A quick test fit. Shows that it fits relatively well, not too bad at all, as does the other side once cleaned up. So pretty good, not too tricky, not too demanding, and it is a natural panel line on the real car. So once you get these glued in place, they shouldn't really take any work to finish off. As you can see, I'm just checking the position of them, where they need to go before they're glued. And then our bonnet as well. Or the hood if you're from overseas just needs the sprue locator points cleaned off and a quick test fit shows a very nice neat fit as well of course we've got our supports to put on there too but I just want to check that it actually fits before committing to uh, going bonnet open which we really do want on this because there's quite a nice engine in there so a bit of Tammy Extra Thin, this is my 50-50 mix with EMI Plastiweld. Just allowing the capillary action and a light brush to glue the parts in place. Make sure they're positioned exactly where you want them. Don't push too hard, you'll get molten sprue come out of the panel line and we don't want that at all. Once you have it in place, turn it over, just put a little bit inside as well. Obviously repeat for the other side. And allow these to dry and we're all good. Now there are some bonnet supports. These are the physical pieces that allow the bonnets to hinge open. So cut them off, clean them up, make sure you've got them orientated the right way, referring to your instructions. Pop it in place, make sure your fingers are nowhere near anywhere that's going to get any glue. And then just a little bit of gentle time extra thin. 
on each side. There we go. Hold it nicely in place, and again, repeat for the other side, and then repeat for the other support strut too. Make sure they're straight, and they're going to foul up when you put it in the car. Now, there is this little piece of bodywork that goes between the front uh, grille and chrome bumper as well. So this needs to be painted in body colour and that needs to be cleared as well. So a little bit fiddly to do, but pretty simple at the end of the day. So just some gentle clean up again with a 400 thinny stick. I've been squirreled there, probably talking too many hangouts, but yeah, we're cleaning it up, hit it with the buffer again, and again, we're good to go. So just quick test fit some of the chrome now, couldn't help it. Uh, front chrome grille, headlights around, support, etc. All fits in pretty well. It's quite a nice snug fit. That's the piece we were just cleaning up that clicks, well, glues underneath. As you see, it falls off at the drop of a hat. Then we've got the lower piece of the bumper as well. And again, it all seems to fit in pretty well. It's not too bad at all. We're probably going to leave the kick chrome on because it is actually pretty good. Uh, it's not the best we've seen. It's by far not the worst, so I'm pretty happy with it. So we're probably going to leave it be. Now all the seams of the kit, they literally run along the front wing, up the A-pillar, across the roof, down the rear window, across the fins at the back, and along the boot lid. So we've got a 220 UMP standing sponge. And being gentle, we don't remove any contours or shapes or reshape anything, but we are get rid of any seams that we can see. This is a well-used one. It's not too aggressive. And just systematically all around the car, looking for these seams, remove them. Once they're removed, hit them with a buffer, and then we can prep for our primer. Now, I did contemplate blacking out this car totally, so spraying all the chrome black, doing the window surrounds black, and I've not completely ruled it out yet. Um, I do kind of like the chrome look, and I would like to try my hand at bare metal foil. The problem with bare metal foil is, if the 2K goes on a little bit too thick, We've got no guideline to go around. So I'm going to play that by ear for now. But I do kind of like the, the blacked out look. But then I want to do the chrome look. I'm a bit stuck at the minute what to do. But we'll decide that later on. We don't need to decide right now. And now let's just get this car all prepped for our primer. So as you can see we're just working on the seams. Not too many. They're not too bad. They're not really that prominent. But they still need taken care of. They run down the back window too. And across that rear wing there. And then across the boot lid. And that's it. They're all done. So I'm not really applying any pressure. Let the sander do the work. Once you're happy it's all gone, have a check or a thumbnail. You come with a buffer. Use the blue or green side first. Then polish to a high shine with the white side after you're done. That way you can see that the seam has actually gone. And a quick fingernail check will always confirm that as well. And there we go. Happy with that. Perfect. Now we've got a 3000 grit 3M Trizec pad that I've cut into separate portions. And we're going to scoop up the entire body. Now I like these pads, but I only like them for using for scuffing up the body. Because I think they're a little bit too aggressive for general sanding. When I've used them in the past, I tend to burn through the paint. So I use them just for this, and this only really. They're very expensive, they're not cheap at all, but they are good, they do work well. And for this job, they work especially good. But for any other time, I like the Micro Mesh. Micro Mesh works very well, it's very forgiving, but I like scuffing the body up with these pads. Plus I bought them, so I need to find a use for them. So that's why they're being used here like this. Once we're happy that's done, all cleaned up, scuffed up all the body. We got our toothbrush, get rid of any remnants of sanding dust or muck or dirt that's accumulated in any areas. Just go around, clean everything out. Again, I say every time, preparation is key. The more time you put in now, the better the finish you'll get at the end. Once we're happy all the dust is gone, we can come in with some uh, airbrush cleaner. So this is UMP airbrush cleaner with no dyeing. Um, you can just use a normal airbrush cleaner, but I have a bottle of this knocking about. And just on a piece of kitchen paper, run it around the entire body, get rid of any fingerprints, sanding dust, any residue of anything that might interfere with primer. 
I'm just going around the whole thing, wiping off anything that might be left behind. And we can wipe it off with a dry piece of kitchen paper. And that's us ready for primer. So, great primer for this. I did contemplate using black and then I thought, no, we'll go with the grey. Uh, and I'm glad I did. The colour came out well in the end, as you'll see in a little bit. So, we're going for grey UMP primer. Um, we're using our anti static Tamiya brush to wipe off all the body panels. I find this helps quite a lot. Then, we're going to load up our airbrush. We'll blow down the model with the airbrush, just air as well, to remove any last remnant of dust. And then, we're going to apply three or four coats. So, we start off pretty thin. We're not trying to hose the model down. The grey is a bit more forgiving, especially on white, because you can see where it's landing. But still, don't try and cover it all on your first go. Get a nice mist coat down, work around the body, and by the time you've done that, you can come back and put a second coat down, should you wish. For me, I know just how far I can push this, and um, I'm more than happy to lay it on a little bit thicker as we go. But if you're not too sure, just do nice thin coats. I'd rather do an extra couple of coats than ruin a paint job. Um, a bit more patience will pay off in the end. So this is our 0.35 Ultimate Apex Airbrush. We're at 30 PSI. Like I said, we're going to put two, about three or four coats of the Ultimate Grey Primer on. Just build it up slowly, make sure we get all those areas, recesses, all the different angles, just to make sure we get even coverage. Inside the wheel arches, the back part of the bumper, etc, etc. As you can see, we're not trying to hose it on, we're just getting even coverage all around. You can see how nice and smooth it lays on. Don't forget every angle, turn it round, make sure you get all those window seals, um, the front and rear part of the bonnet, um, upper part of the windows, even inside as well, all the upper parts of the um, framework inside could do with a coat so just take your time make sure you get everywhere covered now we're going to have to spray the bonnet separately on this because it is removable um we'll have to keep it separate for now because the primer will stick together but as you'll see when i'm doing the color coat i do pop it on uh, after a couple of coats of the inside of the, the engine bay just to ensure we get even color coverage all around but again, not hosing it on, just put on enough to get a coat, set it aside, aside for five minutes, and then come back and we can pop another subsequent two coats on. So this is our fourth coat now. I decided on four. As you see, I'm just finishing off the fourth coat, just checking we haven't missed anywhere. So five minutes between coats is plenty. You can see by looking at it if it's dry because it looks wet. When it's dry, you can actually see it's physically dry. You can help this by using air off the airbrush to dry it as well. I often like just to let it naturally dry. It doesn't take long at all. And as you can see, the four coats are covered really well. When you're doing your bonnet, make sure you get the edges as well. And then underneath, some will be painted black, so it's not a worry to get it all. And there we go. We'll set that aside overnight. And then the next day we're back. We've got some 8000 Micromesh. I'm just going to go over and lightly flat all the primer. Being aware of all the edges and corners and what have you. We don't want to burn through. We're all we're doing is take off any high spots, any dust. Just to give us the ultimate flat finish for our paint, which we're going to do next. So again, no real pressure. Now. You could use this wet, I had to use it dry because I'm going to paint this straight away after this step. I don't want any remnants of moisture behind, so I'd use it dry and change or turn the paper as and when needed. But as you see, quick visual inspection, you'll see anything removed. Just take your time, especially on edges and corners. Don't go too rough or you'll burn straight through and you have to pop another coat of primer on. So again, like I say, preparation is key. It's another step to achieving a better finish. Spray booth, and we've got our Gravity Spain Chevrolet Classic Copper. Now, I saw another build of this on YouTube a while back. I fell in love with the colour, contacted Gravity, and Antonio, the owner of Gravity, very kindly offered to make it up for me. It's now on their website. 
and it looks a beautiful, beautiful colour. Now, in terms of like the other gravity paints I've used recently, it's going to lay down absolutely beautiful. So, I like to put seven to nine coats of paint on. Ultra thin coats, very, very fine. I probably lose most of my paint through overspray. But the depth of colour I get doing this pays off. And I'd rather use a bit more paint, and take a bit more time, and get a better finish overall. So, with these paints, any of these automotive paints, take your time. They are hotter than normal paints. They will craze the plastic if you're not careful. So, light coat is the king. And again, we're not trying to get coverage with one go. As you can see, it's a very light first coat. Start at the bottom, work our way up. Changing the angle as we go to make sure we get all the coverage where needed. So we're through the 0.35 apex now. I have an airbrush just for base coats. Um, again, we're at uh, 18 psi with this one. We lower the pressure for the lacquers. They don't need as high a pressure as the primers. And again, you can see this really isn't going on thick at all. It's a very nice thin coat all around, and again, this will pay off over time. And again, make sure you angle for all the recesses, different corners, the edges of the bonnet, the edges of the slam panel, the windows, just to make sure you get even coverage. Because you want to make sure you get even coats all the way around, so some areas are darker than the others. But already, the colour's looking good, the coverage is very good. I was a bit worried applying it over grey, it wouldn't cover as well as it would have with black, but it did. These are very high quality paints, and they're definitely my favourites at the minute. So now we're just making sure we've got a kind of even coat all around, just getting inside that slam panel, under the arches, under the rear section as well, just make sure we get everything covered. And then while we're here, because it's been about five minutes now, we can give it another go past. Very, very light again. The beauty of like it is, once you work your way around the model, by the time you come back, most of the time it's dried anyway. Because it was such an ultra thin coat, I'm happy to put another one down. If you're not, again, just leave it a little bit more time, rather than rushing. And again, no thick coats, no wet coats, that's the worst thing you can do. You just want a fine spray. Angle it towards the light so you can see the spray actually landed on the model. And you have no problem at all. Once you're happy with your coat, again, we're getting our wheel arches. Once you're happy with it, put it to one side for 10 minutes, let it off gas, flash off. Then you can come back and apply as many coats as you see fit. But for this, we're going to do about nine in total. Very light coats. I'm just getting some of the interior now as well. See so a little bit less finesse on the interior. And of course, off camera, we're doing the bonnet and that little front panel for the bumper as well. So we come back, we're on about our third coat now. And you can see we're starting to build it up slowly. We are doing alternate um, left, right, and up and down passes. So we've already just done an up and down pass and come back with a left and right. This again ensures even coverage. And you can see just how well the paint's starting to go down. And you can really see that colour starting to deepen and really become coming to uh, its fruition, I guess the word is. I don't think it is. It might be. I've been making stuff up. But again, you can see we're not spraying heavy coat. It's very, very fine. Like I said, I'd rather waste a little bit more paint. And get nice even colours and depth. And put four or five heavier ones on. So again, with the bonnet, um, the engine bay, you've got recesses in there to take care of. So we're making sure they're all covered as well. And again, onto the roof, you can see just how fine a mist of spray that it is going on there. We're ever so slightly overlapping with each coat. You can see now we're getting real nice coverage. So on the next four or five coats, I'm going to put the bonnet or hood on in place. And that way we can ensure we get even coverage and the colours the same 
all around. And again, use the light to your advantage, angle it round so you can see everywhere to make sure you've got even coverage. So I would say this now is about coat number six or seven. Now even after nine coats we used not even a third of the paint. It really did cover really well. We um, it varies from colour to colour, some require more, some require less. The super I'm building at the purple one used the entire bottle because I just kept going with the coat so I got the colour I wanted. But you can see this now really starting to become that beautiful copper colour. And again, still, we're not hosing the paint on, it says light mist coats. And again, not forgetting the wheel arches, the recesses and the interior. So make sure we get the colour all round. And that's looking stunning. Absolutely beautiful colour. So, our last coat now. This is coat number 9. As you can see, absolutely stunning. It's really darkened up. It looks like the colour in the bottle now. And again, going a little bit slightly heavier on these last few coats. Again, we're not putting it on wet. But we're just going a little bit heavier now. We've got the paint down and most of it's flashed off. It's a stunning colour. Absolutely beautiful. I say we've got a bonnet on that ensures we get even coverage all round. Nothing worse than paint and parts separately, and when you put them together, they're different colours. It's not great at all. So if you can, spray them together. And of course, we're also doing that front panel as well, off camera. There she is. Every time we do a coat, we do a coat on this as well, and then put it to one side to dry. So this has been left overnight again. We're back the next day. And we're going to decal now. Picking the decals was a bit tricky. I didn't know which way to go. So in the end, we went for the bonnet and hood, uh, bonnet and boot stripes, and then the side stripes as well. Uh, I decided on black because I think I like the look better than the white. We've got our ultimate decal solutions up there. We've got a strong, normal, and extra strong as well. We've got our water. We've got some microset, our knife, our water brushes tweezers and cotton buds as well i'm just going to cut out the decals as we need them now one thing i did notice uh the decal numbers are off um they don't correspond correctly at all so just double check everything when you're doing it checking the temperature of my water and there we go we place the decal in for 20 seconds or so Once you're happy that the decal is ready to go, slide a bit of it off, pop it roughly in place. We've got some micro set under there too, we popped on to allow us to position the decal. And then slide it off the back and paper gently. Use your brush with some micro set on as well to get it all positioned, get any bubbles out, creases, etc. etc. Now on this one I didn't cut the decal at all, and that rear section near the windscreen was a bit tricky to fit. Um, when I did the second one, I actually cut it at the back and it went on a lot better. So just bear that in mind. So using the cotton bud now to remove any excess microsol uh, set and water. Just make sure the decal is exactly where we want it before we commit to decal solutions. You've got a few different angles to go over here, so make sure it's all down where you like it correctly. Once you're happy, we get some UMP normal solution. That's plenty to set these in place. Revel decals tend to separate easily. Well, the Revel Germany decals do. And again, make sure you get it all brushed in place where you want it. Don't let the decal solution pull. And just keep working on it until you get all the creases and imperfections out. There we go. After that's dry for a bit, we're going to cut our bonnet edge there because the decal carries over it. So cut it with a brand new blade, and then use your water pen with the normal UMP solution on it, just to push the edges over. I want you to happy leave that to dry. Or what I did, I hit it with the strong as well, just to make sure it was fully set in place. Onto our rear decals now, as you can see we've got the other front decal on as well. 
I think the black and copper go together really well. So happy I chose this combination. So making sure these are evenly spaced apart using the front as reference. And that they're exactly where we want them. Then we can, same process as before, remove excess water and hit them with the solutions. Side stripes now. So you've got a side stripe under the door, one on the rear and one on the front as well. Now there is one to go on the bonnet front grill cover <laughs> but it couldn't go on because of the stripes now a bit of a strange one uh, but obviously we chose the bonnet stripes so that's the way we went and again same as before get it in place use your pen with some micro set to get it roughly where you want it once you're happy you can manipulate with your fingers or your tweezers or whatever and again remove any excess water hit it with the solutions job done Really nice decals. I've never had a problem with Germany Revel decals. The USA ones I have. But the German ones seem to be pretty decent. So, decals are dried now. We've got a Tamiya black panel line wash. And we're going to have every recessed panel line around the doors, the bonnet, the boot lid, etc, etc. To give it a bit of a wash and a little bit of depth. So, it's an enamel wash. So, just pop it in place, let it dry. Once it's dry, you can go back with a cotton bud. Use some odorless mineral spirits if required, or if you catch it as it's drying, it'll normally just wipe off without anything. Just be gentle, don't rub too hard, because you don't want to burn through the paint, and it is possible. Now, this has been left overnight, and we're going to 2K it, so precautions are needed. Maybe not as uh, drastic as Mike has taken here, uh, but using the 2K clear coat, you need some safety precautions. Make sure you've got gloves, a good respirator, a spray booth, Make sure there's nobody else in the room with you. And make sure you don't get exposed to any of the fumes. Because you don't end up looking like Warwick. Um, because that would be devastating. So I've double gloved. My left arm is covered. Because that's the one I spray with. We've got some water in a spray can. The spray booth has been clean, clean, completely cleaned out. Dusted. Wiped down. All new paper. Which we are wetting as you can see. Giving her a good soak. Once we're happy that's done. We're spraying literally everywhere with water. We've got our UMP Apex 0.35. So this was cleaned after its last use. Put away. It was cleaned before today. And it was left with thinner in overnight. We've got some medicine cups. And our 190 micron paint strainer. And we're going to mix our Gravity 2K clear coat. So this is Gravity Spain. This is what I've been using for a few months now. And in my opinion it is unbeatable as a clear coat. It is absolutely beautiful. So it's a three to one to one mix. So we're going to go with six mil of clear. We're using our graduated medicine cup to measure the six mil of clear. I find this should just be enough to finish most models. We then got two milliliters of the activator. So pop that in using a different pipette each time. Make sure you're getting the excess out of the pipette and give it a really good stir up to mix the chemicals together. This will then start the chemical reaction, and I would say you've got about 40 minutes of working time, roughly. But with the tack coat and two wet coats, it takes about half an hour to do. Make sure it's still remixed, then throw that pipette away, pick up a fresh one for your thinner, and we're adding two milliliters of this too. And again, once it's in, give it a really good stir up. And then again throw away the pipette you do not want to be cross contaminating the uh, the bottles with different solutions and then we've got our strainer i always strain the 2k get every last little drip out of that medicine cup and again throw that away and then we've got our 10 milliliters of clear 2k clear coat ready to go again the tamiya anti-static brush we've got our model taped to the tamiya stand and our bonnet um, clamped by two clamps. Kind of a bit of a sketchy way of doing it, but it'll work. So, quick blow over the airbrush again. We're at 18 psi again, 0.35 apex, and we're going to give our tack coat to begin with. So we're not going for a wet coat, we're going for eh, kind of in between, a bit of a semi-wet coat. And what this does, once it's left for 5-10 minutes, it'll tack up, really sticky. And when you put your wet coat on, it won't run. So again, 
Start at the bottom, working your way up, making sure you get all those wheel arches, every recess and angle. You can see where it's going, that's the beauty of this stuff. So it's very easy to apply, but again, make sure you're making full use of all these safety recommendations. I've got a full face respirator on, skin's covered, I've got the booth on, it's left running the whole time. And once I'm finished for the day, I vacate the room for a good hour off gases. Please pay attention to the safety rules. So again, just a nice light taco all around. Making sure we get everywhere covered, especially those front edges of the uh, the wings and the inner wing slightly as well. Where the bonnet's going to close up over. Now, what I did a few weeks back was put a, um, a bin bag hood over my spray booth. So it's got kind of a roof. And it's made a huge difference to reduce the amount of dust and hair and malarkey I get landing in the finish. So, well worth doing. When I get time, I will make a permanent structure with a roof on. Um, but it's definitely cutting down on the dust. So, something to bear in mind if you're struggling with dust. But there we go. As you can see, it's semi-wet. It's not a perfect wet coat. This is then put to one side for 10 minutes. As you can see, there we go. So that will have gone really tacky now, and we're coming with our first wet coat. So we're going to do nice, even passes. Again, making sure we got all those recesses and angles. But we're not going for a flawless wet coat. We're just going to get a wet coat down. We'll get the flawless on with our last finish. Now, I'm kind of rushing through this. If you want to see a full um, spray of this, I have reviewed the Gravity 2K on the channel. If I remember, I'll put it in the description down below. If not, you can find it in the description of all the products I use. It is in there as well. But all we're doing is get a nice, even wet coat down. A little bit of fluff at the front. I'm just grabbing my tweezers. At this point, on your first wet coat, you can try and get hair and dust out. After this, leave it be because it makes more of a mess than good. But again, we're not trying to get our flawless coat now. We're just trying to get a nice, even coat. We will get that flawless coat at the end of our third coat, our second wet coat. As you see now, the copper colour is dark and beautiful. Really starting to show its true colour. A little bit of dust on the roof, unfortunately. Can't be helped, sadly. Just one of those things. And again, off camera, we're doing the bonnet and we're doing that front piece as well. But I thought it was more important to show the body than those. So that's why I always concentrate on this. In between coats, we're covering it with a box as well to make sure no dust lands. And this is our third and final coat. So this one, we want a flawless finish. So we're giving it again a full wet coat all the way around. Once we've passed all around the body, we'll go around and inspect for any areas looking for orange peel or imperfections. If you see orange peel, it's put a little bit more of the 2K down. But don't put too much, just a little bit. It will self-level. If in doubt, leave for five minutes and come back and have another look. Like I said, we did get a little bit of dust on the roof. And sadly, we did get a little bit of dust on the bonnet right in one of the stripes, which is an absolute pain. Just one of those things, sadly. The 2K is that sticky. It really will attract any dust or hair. So again, preparation is key. I always hoover the room the day before. Tidy up, dust everything. And then the next day, come in afresh and spray. And as you can see, we've got a beautiful clear coat there now. I'm just having a good look around. Any areas I'm not happy with, we just go over again. But beautiful dark copper colour now, really showing through well. Absolutely stunning. So again, quick visual inspection. Then I'll put this away for five minutes. And then we'll get everything back out and have one final look before we clean everything up. As you can see, in the plastic tub with the lid. There are air holes in the side. Just put that to one side. Five minutes later, we come back, take it out, have one final inspection. And yeah, I'm happy with that. As you can see, it's self-leveled out beautiful. Happy with it, pop it all back in its box and leave it be. It'll be dust dry in two hours and touch dry in 24. 
And here we are, so we've got two hours later. We're over on the workbench. You can see a horrible bit of dust in that front bonnet, but it's just one of those things. And again, just having a quick look around. Making sure everything's okay. Let's get our bonnet out first. And again, apart from that little bit of fluff and dust, it looks really good. We'll have to polish that out. So very happy with that. Turned out really well. Very happy how that copper colour darkened up as well. It does look phenomenal. And then we carefully remove our body. We've got our front section pushed into the stand as well. And again, quick visual inspection. Make sure you don't touch anything because it is still tacky at this point. And for whatever you do, don't drop it. And again, beautiful clear coat. Very, very happy with that. You can actually see my paint in the reflection there. Glues and what have you. Beautiful. Very happy with that finish and that colour too. It looks phenomenal. And there we go. Once we're happy, we'll pop it back in its box and put it to one side safely. We'll leave one edge of the box ajar to let it properly off gas. But we know it's safe and not going to get damaged. So there we go. Very, very happy how that's turned out. Uh, we're going to leave that for five days now to fully cure. Uh, we'll crack on with this chassis and running gear next, which again looks great. We've got a full engine in this as well. So quite a bit of work to do, but that's the next step and that'll be the next video as well. So very happy with that colour. The gravity paints, not disappointing again. Beautiful coverage, beautiful colour, and with that stunning 2K over the top, it looks amazing. I'm very happy I picked that colour. Um, and I think it's going to look great once it's done. Revel decals went down without a hitch at all. Uh, a few tricky ones, but they went down beautiful. Really can't fault the Revel Germany decals. Um, they responded well to just a normal UMP solution. And I hit them with a the strong, just as a you know contingency plan to make sure that they are fully set in place. I always do that, whether they need it or not. And uh, yeah, again, they look great. So we're off to a very good start. Hopefully we'll continue. We'll be back with part two very, very soon. Uh, I've got other projects on the go as well, but we're going to get back to this as soon as possible. I'd say three or four days, you'll probably see another part of this. And uh, hopefully we get all our engine built, sprayed, uh, and the chassis, uh, the running gear, everything. And then we can move on to our interior. So there we go. Thanks for watching today. As always, if you've got any comments, please leave them down below. I love all the comments left and reply to every single one. If you're not sub to the channel, sub. Click the thumbs up notification, so click the bell icon, give us a thumbs up as well. And like I say, leave any comments you want. And as always, check out Intasa Scar Model Facebook page or forum, upretail.com, where you can see a lot of the products I use in these videos. There is a link in the description down below of all the products I use, so you can go there and have a look. Um, check out the Live the Bench page and the Offer Hangout group for all the hangouts. And check out my Paul ISM Facebook page as well. There we go. I'll catch you all next time in part two. Take care. Bye-bye.